When Angel by Terry Mugler was released in 1992, it really changed the game. It became a trendsetter. It was the first gourmand perfume to be uh, in the market. And, well, it really caught the eye of everybody, or I'd rather say caught the nose. I remember smelling it in many places, especially at night, and I really liked it. Unfortunately, some people complained about its strength. They said that it was too loud and that it was too long-lasting, believe it or not. So probably Thierry Mugler, or the company called Thierry Mugler, has taken note of this and as time went by, uh, the perfume was a little bit less strong. I wouldn't say that it was watered down because that has a negative connotation, but it was probably reformed to appeal to the general tastes nowadays. Is this successful? Is this a failure? Well, who knows? It depends on what you like. If you like loud perfumes, probably you would prefer to have a vintage angel with you or maybe to search for it on the internet. If you like your perfumes not to be so loud, then you would probably be very happy, very content with what you get on the market nowadays. But just in case you're one of those people who really miss strength, then, well, here I'm going to give you some clues on how to find Vintage Angel. As I said before, Angel was created in 1992, and if you want to spot the old uh, boxes of the perfume, you have to pay attention to a certain number of data. First of all, you should focus on the name of the perfume. If it is small, or relatively small, the font at the front of the box, then you have a vintage angel. Also, you should look at the logo. Um, as, as you can see, Thierry Mugler's logo included his real signature until 2004. So it was like an ascending logo. It went from, like, it made like a curve going up. From 1992 to 2004, you have another clue, which is the short list of ingredients at the back of the box. You will find a short list of ingredients, four or five ingredients, and also at the bottom, you will see no reference to any website. The batch codes are engraved or carved uh, on the bottom of the box, which is black, so it's really difficult to see them. Sometimes they don't even appear. In 2003-2004, you got the same logo and you got the same type of front of the box. I mean, there was no uh, difference. The, the name of the perfume was still quite small, but then if you look at the back of the box, you will see a longer list of ingredients, as you can see here. And also, for the first time, the website Thierry Mugler is included. So this is not so vintage, but vintage. In 2004 or 2005, the logo changed. It became uh, linear. It didn't make any curve. So it was not ascending anymore. But it was still Thierry Mugler, the name and the surname. In general, it becomes a little bit bigger. In 2006, the name of the perfume in the front of the box becomes larger. It's much bigger than before. And then if you have a look at the back of the box, you'll see that the list of ingredients is slightly modified. Then from 2006 to 2016, there were probably some changes in the formula to make it less bombastic, let's say. Some sources affirm that changes took place around 2009, others say that they happened in 2012. Who knows? But it seems that towards 2012 the perfume was less strong. And then finally in 2016 the new logo of Thierry Mugler was unveiled. The name of the designer was dropped and his surname now is featured in block capitals. And that's the last difference, the last formulation that we have in the market for the Eau de Parfum, of course. I'm not talking about the Eau de Toilette, which is much newer. And 
Well, the performance is still good, but it's more polite nowadays than in the past. So, you know, people, choose your choice. Angel is no angel.